just get straight into the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. <clears throat> to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Honor and glory forever. 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 Amen. That's to the Lamb that sits on the throne, the only true God, the only wise God, immortality, invisible, the Father of light, the God of all flesh. True and truth. King of kings, Lord of lords. Adonai, owner of heaven and earth. Elohim, creator God that was never created. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We adore you. We honor you. We appreciate you. We thank you. You deserve glory. You deserve honor. You deserve adoration. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is so right, scepter. Thy throne. Oh God is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is so right scepter the Lord Glory and hey, we can therefore God, my God, has anointed me with the above my fair therefore God my God therefore God my God as I know tell me with the oil of gladness above my fair 
They ask for your proposal. They say, send your CV. They say, we've gotten your documents. We'll get back to you. He said to Joshua, unto these people will you divide an inheritance. He said to Moses, you will take them out. You could take them in, but you're not to divide their inheritance. He said to Joshua, you have an anointing to give them their due, their portion. That's what the oil of gladness does. If you're like that, rise. Let me pray with you. Say, but there are 2,000 documents. And they're only choosing two. Don't worry. It doesn't matter. You're one of those two. <laughs> You're one of those two. They will send for you. Let the oil of gladness. Let the oil of joy. Let it rest on your head. Stretch your hands like you receive it, like you have it. Let it rest on your head. And let the carriers of your peace. And they said to King Saul, you shall meet three men on the way. They will give you this, this, and this. Messengers of God. The Cyrus. They will come and deliver to you that which is yours in the name of Jesus. Be it in form of appointment. Receive it. For job, receive it. For contract, receive it. In whatever form it is meant to come, in whatever flesh it will take, that it may move you forward in life. Any way that started, even with a mere word. Well, don't worry, I'll get back to you. Then it must come back and give you what is yours in the name of Jesus. By the unction of the oil of gladness, let it be delivered into your bands. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. You can have your seat. Praise God. The Bible is filled with names of people who made it, those who didn't make it, the Bible says they are left there for us to learn why they failed and why they didn't make it. But it says we should look at the record of those who made it and also learn. Colossians 1.23, Paul said, a portion of the word of God has been given to me to fulfill a portion of the word of God has been given to me to fulfill. That's Colossians 1.23. And so he has a race and a mission to fulfill that word. We see in the political scene different people with prophetic utterances to make it. Though the battle is not yet closed, but you could see some with wounds coming out and some with victories coming out. Some made it, some did not make it. In Hebrews 4, it says the same word preached to us was the same word preached to them, but it did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the fact that God says it does not settle it. You know that song? God speaks it. How do they? I believe it. That settles it. <laughs> it's more than that. I believe it. That settles me. The word believe is vast. The word believe is vast. So we have a race to fulfill and accomplish 
a destiny which by the special grace of God you will all fulfill. Amen. And I like, as the word says, like Elijah was a man, like, like passions like all of us with frailties. And Bible made it clear he ran even for a woman. As powerful as it was to shut heaven and earth, he ran from a woman. So he had frailties. So there's no superhuman anywhere. We all have our frailties. We all have our weakness. The earlier we acknowledge, the better. You know, praise God. But that's not enough to stop us. But the Bible says when we're weak, then we are strong. When June, right? Psalm 21. I'm just digressing. In Psalm 21, we even have a confession in Psalm 21. I'll read verse 3. Maybe I should look into the confession. Oh, it's my other phone. Can you bring Psalm 21 up? Verse 3. Say, thou preventest him with blessings of goodness. You set a crown of pure gold on his head. Can you bring it up? Is it up? No, not. Oh, sorry. Let me have the confession, Psalm 21. Let me have it. Thank you. My goodness. <laughs> oh, yama kasani. Don't, don't, don't look around. It's a word for someone this month of June, so don't look around. Don't look around. It's a word. Okay. He said, no, that's verse, take it to verse 3. God has so blessed me whereby people call God good. Then he has placed a crown of pure gold on my head. It's for somebody here this month of June. You will be sent for. And you'll be given something Amen. that people will ask. Okay, I've seen it. Thank you. The people will ask, ah, ah, from where to where? From what step to, I'm talking of June. Amen. From what step to what step? Amen. How is that? How did that happen? What's going on? Why does he say what's going on? You'll be warning. <laughs> Lord said to tell you that he has called for such a blessing into your life Amen. that people will use you and say, ah, Amen. I don't want to mention the name. The person is here. Ah, no, 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 no. Talomo. Talomo. This month of June. Amen. They're the ones say amen. amen. So, we said that it's a race of destiny, and there is a purpose, and there's a plan. The purpose is set. The plan can change from time to time. And there's someone watching. I don't know whether you are here or you're watching me. They just adjusted the plan. And they just took a detour. Is the divine. But where they took you into where you are going is smooth. Amen. But the detour they have taken you to is now rough. With a slight traffic. Stay in that car. Because if you lean out and look well, you will see that the front is clear. And leads straight to Zion. Don't go out to buy anything if you're hungry. Stay in the car because you will soon move. And once you move, you will not stop. 
till you get there. Amen. 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 Back to our message. Faith is more important, we said, than time. Jesus demonstrated this in John chapter 2 at the wedding feast of Cain of Galilee. We said faith is more important than prophecy. He demonstrated it in Matthew 15 with the Syrophoenician woman when he said to her, I'm sent only by the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he attended to her. We said faith is more important than heaven itself because faith built heaven. And if heaven, the Bible says the heavens will melt with fervent heat and a new heaven will come up which will also be created by faith. So if all the heavens destroy another heaven, they're created by faith. If you destroy, we'll create another heaven. The earth at one time was destroyed. Satan was cast and he destroyed the earth. What did God do? He created it, recreated it. How? By faith. So faith is more important than heaven and earth. Amen? We say faith is the most important subject on earth. However, love is the greatest, but faith is the most important. Because without faith, you cannot attain to love. Faith, we say, is more important than money. Because money answereth all things, but faith solves all things. Answer is different from solve. In Egypt, money failed, but faith can never fail. Faith will always bring you money. So if you have to choose between faith and money, choose faith. Because when you have faith, you will have money. But choosing money, you may not have faith. Amen. Mark 11. Mark 11. That's still our faith um, scripture, right? I'll read from verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Jesus answered and said to it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. In verse 20, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter, calling to remembrance, said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. When Jesus answering said to him, to them, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say, Unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I don't know how many times we've read the scripture. So many times, right? Don't worry, you'll be bored. <laughs> okay. So we said, when you believe, then you shall have the things, you shall receive the things which you um, um, say. But this scripture is applicable in prayer and it's applicable in confession. It's applicable to prophecy. It's applicable to the word given to you. It's applicable in all fronts. It's like the parable of the sower. Jesus said, believe not this parable, understand not this parable, then how shall you understand all parables? The parable of the sower is the center of all parables. And I repeat it. All of you, Mark 4, go and study Mark 4 for the next three months. Study Mark 4 for the next three months. Leave Mark 5. Leave Luke uh, 10. Leave um, 
Where's that one? Give and it shall give and possess all my possessions. Where is it? Eh? Uh, leave possession of possession. Go and study Mark 4. It's compulsory. Jesus said, if you don't understand it, you will not understand all other parables. So it's compulsory. The parable of the sower. You know, the first one received the word with joy. You are not supposed to receive the word with joy. Like our brother said, you're supposed to receive the word with meekness. Those that receive it with joy still lose it. Those that receive it with meekness, it gets engrafted. It cannot be lost. Then it profits. So study Mark 4, the parable of the sower. Both the parable and the interpretation for the next three months. Amen. Amen. So here he's saying whether God gave you a word, you have to apply this principle. Or you declared a word, you have to apply this principle. Or you went to God in prayer, you have to apply this principle. Either way, the fact that you have spoken the word, you must believe. You must not doubt. You must say, then you will have. And that is the God style of oppression. That's how he created the entire earth. And if you tell me, God spoke without any single doubt. What if God doubted? I don't think it will come into existence. That's the way it works. You know, he's giving you the secret of how it works. And it's a principle of how it works. If you do this, this, you know, God told Samuel, he said, no word of your mouth will fall to the ground. What if Samuel spoke and doubted? It will fall to the ground. It will fall to the ground. But if he spoke and not doubt, it will not fall to the ground. So do you need God to tell you about Samuel? No, you just need to understand this principle. And you're like Samuel, no word of your mouth falls to the ground. That's the thing about establishing and prophecy. He told Samuel, and the Lord let none of his words fall to the ground. But if Samuel doubt any of his word that he speaks, it will fall to the ground because God exalts his word above his name. And if God does not tell you any of your word, will not, he will not let you fall to the ground. If you can follow Mark 11, then none of your words will fall to the ground. So don't bother about him telling you whether it will fall or not. Just follow Mark 11. It will not fall. Do you get it? So it's applicable to the word spoken, to the word you declare, or to your interaction with God in prayer. Meaning, if you go to God in prayer, and you mention something to him, and the scripture says, this is the confidence we have. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if he heareth us, we have the petition granted. Then this is still applicable. So it is applicable in all fronts. It's applicable in dealing with Satan. If you address Satan and you doubt in your heart, he will not obey you. If you go to God and you negotiate with him and he says, granted, and you doubt, it will not work. It will not happen. If you decree it and you believe it and you don't doubt it, it will work. So it's a universal principle for faith. Am I communicating? That's why sometimes we are not bothered if we don't have all the prophecies. So long as we have the principles, we get the results. While the person that has a prophecy, if he doesn't follow the principle, he will not get the results. Do you get it? If God says, I'll make your last days beautiful, and you dishonor your parents, there's nothing anybody can do about it. It will no longer be beautiful. If God does not say he will make you beautiful, and you honor your parents, it will be beautiful. So in a nutshell, we'll rather chase the principle than the prophecy. Do you get it? Because the prophecy will not work without the principle. If God says give, it shall be given back unto you. And someone says, hey, it shall be given back unto you. God is going to send. If you don't give, if you give, even if you don't say it, it will come back. It will be given unto you. Even if God, there's no prophecy saying it. Do you get it? So sometimes the prophecy is to remind you, to give you strength. To let you know that what you have done, God is aware and is reassuring you that what you have done works and it's working and very soon you will get the result. Am I communicating? So in this Mark 11, it's applicable with John 16. That says, 
If you go, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And the Father, when he says he will give it to you, if you say, Father, I want to have... I'm, I'm laying the template today. I, I thought we would set June as faith month, uh, July faith month. No, we've already set June as faith month. We'll extend it into July. Just like we had family month for May, it's faith month. Faith month. I expect you this month. <laughs> I expect you. I expect. You know, God said, Sun be, moon be, stars be. Then he set their course. Then he said, as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, day and night, winter and summer. Joshua changed it. Leave God what he has said. That's why we say leave the prophecy. We can change what God himself visited and said to you from heaven. We will change it. After all that, Joshua changed day to night, changed nights to day. Then the Bible says, that's a sad thing. And there has been no day like that. Ever. And cannot be. Ah, something is wrong with the church. Because there should have been many more. Did God not say no one can change it? He told David, my covenant of day and night. He said no one can break. Did that one not break covenant of day and night? Forget about what God said that there shall be no day like it. You know, God said, and Solomon. That's why I said from this month, when the devil sees you miles, people will wonder, who is he running from? Is you. Yeah. And he said to Solomon, and there shall be no king like you. Right? Do you know why? Do you know why he's waiting? He's waiting for one person to be a king that surpasses that man in wealth. And until one person acts by faith, Everybody be, remains under the wealth of Solomon. Everybody. They estimated the wealth of Solomon as, is it 93 billion? No. Is it 93 billion dollars? It's 93. 93 billion dollars. No. Was it Rockefeller that's 93? No. David was 20 billion dollars in what is stored for Solomon. <laughs> Shake. Oh God. And the whole you. <laughs> Some people have just five million. Ah, the neighbor won't rest. All the young ladies won't sleep. Nobody resting. Abby, twenty billion dollars still holy, serving God. That, that's that's the generation that God is raising now. Amen. Pure, holy, and we know without money, women will come and toast you. As they are toasting, you are preaching the gospel to them. How did it start it to men? Tell me. Um, uh, who will help me out? Kinsley, how do you say it? Say, sir, you're looking good. Abby? <laughs> <laughs> that one is leave, that one is speaker, that one is carrying. Even the wife doesn't worry. If you call the wife, I saw him with 20 ladies in a bus. Say, where well, speakers on top of the bus. He says, no. Say, they are going to carry speakers, don't worry. She's gone back to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Is a set principle. A, B, C, D, E. At E, God can't stop it. Did you hear me? If God wants to stop it, he can't. The only way God can stop it is that he will show wisdom like he did at the Tower of Babel. He couldn't stop that building. He can't say, stop. He cannot. Not he won't. He can't. He said, they have become one. And there is nothing they imagine that shall be restrained from them. So the only thing where I can stop it is stop their oneness. By not cursing them, but by blessing them with more language. Ah, yeah, whoa. That's why I fear him. Because if you think you have attained, say, hey, you have attained. All right. There's a blessing we want to give. That blessing. <laughs> he will use it to shock everybody. And it's a blessing, oh. Say, Abraham, you will live, Lot. 
You will leave Lot. I called you alone. You carry Lot. You will leave Lot. I know what to do. Oh, yeah, both of you be blessed. He won't use death to separate. No. He uses good. So he will just bless me too much. Then I have no choice but to detour where he's calling. I be Mr. Honorable uh, Excellency Sean. Which one do we use? We can, hey, this place is dangerous. So anything you say, they just call it A. I say, yeah, Sean, go B, C, D. At E, he's swearing in. Did you get it? So you ask yourself, when God said no one, no one. So it means there are certain words of God we should take it more as a challenge rather than a finality. So when God says there has been no king like Solomon, neither shall any be like you, don't take it as a finality, take it as a challenge. Say then God, I'll be 10 times bigger than Solomon. Then he says, that is A, you just said it. There is B, there is C, D, by F, you are already bigger than Solomon. And it's not long. What do you need to follow? Mark 11. Mark 11. The God kind of faith. Very simple. Hmm. So we said, therefore, verse 24, I say to you, what things soever you desire when you pray, so it can be used in prayer, in dialogue with God, when you have a response in the affirmative from God. Like when Eli told Hannah, go in peace. The Lord grant you that which you have desired of him. So if it's the Lord, you can take it as that first statement. Then you now go to believe. The Satan will show up at the doubt because he knows he may not be able to stop. If he can stop the doubt, he will stop the process. So he will come up at the doubt. And it is at the doubt that people usually truncate this, the doubt section. So it says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into this. And he used mountain because. Nobody, nobody ever since creation, no human being has moved the mountain. I guess I'll be the first. <laughs> Even if it's just to let people understand that I can be there, I'll be the first, don't worry. I'll be the first. I'll be the first. God is calling us to the realm of the gods, which is this. To believe means to have a firm, fixed opinion based on a process that is right. Okay? To unbelief means to doubt an opinion that is right. Or to hesitate and be undecided, taking a fixed position in what is right. I can say, when Elijah went to that mountain, I can say he believed only when he saw the dark cloud like the hand of a man. That was when he believed. So the first prayer was not believe because he was yet to attain a Firm, unshakable opinion. Though he had prayed to God and God had answered him. Like I said, I'm laying the template. It's faith month. You walk by faith, goodness me. Jesus. You command results of the gods. The gods reign by faith. They rule by faith. Amen? They rule by faith. They reign by faith. And that's how you're going to operate in the name of Jesus. Your faith will so grow 
it will be known in the nations of the earth in the name of Jesus. My prayer is that God will honor your word. And it will be as if God himself has spoken. In the mighty name of Jesus. I told somebody, if you can do one, two, and three, if it's the whole of Nigeria, if it's only one that they will take, you are the person. Nothing in this life, nothing in the heavens, nothing on earth and beneath can change it. It has not been created. The only being that can change it is the creator. No creature can change it. Why am I saying that? I'm saying it based on set rules from the word that says where you go one, two, three, you will get four. So to doubt means to front weight between two opinions based not on what is written but on what you are seeing. That's why it's unacceptable. Let's have a night. Let's look at Matthew 14. All I'm doing is setting the um, template and then um, I've not started the message. I've not even brought the first course. I'm just giving you the paper. And while I'm giving you the paper, you know, you say three course. No. There's some restaurant is like four course. There's like first granite cashew. Some of you don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Let me say that if you go to um, what do you call it? Yamufu's place, Habi. Yamufu. All right. And um, while they're making the um, the gregory, what do you call it? You're the one that knows it. All right. So it's not three, it's four course. May you go to a better place in Jesus' name. This three course meal, outgrow it. There is a place where they bring the menu. Are you getting it? And the waiter is standing. There's cashew nut. There's granite. There's some nuts spiced with um, salt. Some are spiced with sugar. So that when you are going through it, ah. All right. Um, can I have sweet corn plus this blah, 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 first meal? They can have this and this with shrimp, blah, 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 blah. And then for my dessert, blah, 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 blah. So while they're taking your order, you are, it's like small, small bowls. Let me, who can I turn to that you can understand what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, let me not turn to anybody because they say, ah, pastor, I want to not turn to that wiki. That wiki not turn to, I want to turn anybody. Turn to that wiki to call on Amen. Amen. So what I'm doing is just the, the, the granite. We are just, we have not gone to first course. By the time we go to first course, when you rise, as you switch off your phone, what will come in? The news will say, what is this? Kayamo Sondo. Great day. Heaven will give way for you. Earth will respond, not just to your words. Jesus. Praise God. So, in Matthew 14, from verse 22, straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into sheep and to go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitudes away, when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. When his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. They cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is high, be not be afraid. And Peter answering and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And you must understand this. It is normal. It's the task planted. It's a procedure. Immediately the wind went brustrous. That's Satan. When boisterous, he was walking towards Jesus and he was immediately, the wind boisterous, he was afraid, beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately he stretched forth his hand 
and caught him and he said, Oh, thou of little faith, why did you doubt? So he would, he would have walked through, but Satan knows where to stop him, the doubt face. And what does he do? He brings what you know, what you understand, that will be counterproductive to what you believe. Once you consider that opinion, it's over. And that's why many people don't scale through. Abraham considered, no, he didn't give it attention. He didn't give it consideration. He didn't consider it worthy enough to stop his course. We'll be looking at all this, and then you'll understand how it works. And then you can sit and rule the heavens. You can rule the earth. While some are waiting on God, God starts waiting on you because he knows once you get up, there's trouble everywhere. Everywhere's going to shake and he has them following you because you're going to make decrees and proclamations by faith. And you're going to respond appropriately with acts to consolidate those decrees and they will all come to pass. Joshua was faced with two things. And the two things he faced were from God. The first God said, as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, day and night, winter and summer, shall not fail. That's number one. Number two, he said, my covenant of day and night shall never be broken. Those were the two things. And he broke the two. Then God said, and, we, and there shall be no day like it again. He just threw another challenge. See what he's saying? Who is going to break it next? Who is going to break it next? I am. I will. And when he blessed Solomon, he said, there shall be no one like you again. He just threw another challenge. Who's going to be greater than him? I will. I will. Because Jesus said, the greater than Solomon is here. I will. I will. You will. You will. In the name of Jesus. So we're going into a phase where we look at the process, which is an established pattern, after the first one, which is a decree. And even in this situation, like I said to our brother, which one is it? Is it your honorable, your excellency? And as we agree and I move and I say, like the one I said in this June, my word won't fall to the ground. It's not going to fall to the ground. Why won't it fall? Because I believe. And there's no doubt in my heart. And I believe what I've said will come to pass. And it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. So from today, all of you, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you say, while you could bless God, you could glorify God, order your day immediately. And the elements of the day and order your nights. And the elements of the night will attend unto your words. Amen? Amen. We're entering a phase where we're exhibiting rulership over death, over the elements of life, over the prosperity of nations, over everything and every system for one cause, that in us God may be glorified in the name of Jesus. I told you, John Austin was born crippled. You heard it, maybe like polio, or maybe it was polio. I don't know whether, whether it's polio or whether it was just born crippled, born crippled. And this is all the father used. That same John Austin that you see running up and down. This is what the father used, Mark 11. That's all, Mark 11. That's what the father used. And the boy is perfectly well. You've seen him now. You see the way he is. That's the faith of the father. There is nothing, nothing, nothing in this life that you cannot address and reconform and reconfigure to the way you want it. There is no issue that will not be addressed. There is no circumstance that will not be sorted out. Everything will be addressed in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to excel. You'll be great. You'll make it in the name of Jesus. 
while your friends are having visitation of angels. So what did the angel tell you? The angel said, you'll be great. Tell them that the Lord will not just make you great. He will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. The month of June, we appreciate every prophecy, every word of God, but we are putting in motion the systems in the name of Jesus. I speak life to your bodies, to your womb, to your bone marrow. You know what Jesus said? Heal them. He didn't say pray for them. He said, wherever you go, you heard what he said. He said, heal them. Heal them. That's what he said. When Peter met that man at the gate beautiful, he said, what I have, not what I have, in the name of Jesus the Christ, the days of managing health are over here. The days of managing your health, they are over. Amen. What days are we then? Divine health. Amen. Perfect healing. Amen. Total wholeness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Light and darkness cannot cohabit. They said, and the light shine and the darkness recede. What is darkness? Sickness, pain, disease, infirmities, and all kinds. But this word of life is light, which is health to your bones and to your marrow. Kai. Say, but it has never, then you'll be the first. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Faith is greater than anything, than money, than heaven, than the earth. You say, what about the earth? How, where will we stay? The psalmist said in Psalm 46, if the earth be removed, I will not fear. If the earth be removed, I will not Why? I will command oxygen into mass and we start living there. And it will be habitable. What of this water? We will command water to appear. By faith, it will appear. What about glass? It will command trees. Everything will appear. Faith will reorder it again. Amen. 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 So this month of June, since we say it's a faith month, listen carefully, it marks the month and it's your calendar by which we end all manner of sicknesses that you have been managing for years. Managing for years. It ends this month of June in the name of Jesus. Not only does it end, it now makes you whole. This month. So if the heart is not right, they will replace it with a new one. If the liver is not okay, they will replace it with a new one. If the kidney, if the liver, whatever is not, they will replace it. If the lungs are faulty, and you have to be carrying a, um, what do you call it? Inhaler. Inhaler. They will replace the lungs. When? This month of June. Not next month. This month of June. Starting this month of June. They will replace it in the name of Jesus. It's our faith month. It's our month when we ride on the wings and the chariots of God. And we become contemporaries in operations with God. Because faith is an oppression. And God oppressed by faith. So we ride into that divine archive by faith and have the same, not the same result. He said, if you believe better results, you will do more than I do. And have better results than Jesus. It will start this month. The elements of the earth, they will reconfigure just for your sake. In the name of Jesus, the cycle of financial prosperity will be interrupted just to divert to your bands. This month, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I call for an unusual breakthrough intervention in your finances, in your career, in your business, in the name of Jesus. I decree the miraculous, notable, that is undeniable. 
to take place in your lives. In the name of Jesus. I thought that would glorify God in your life in Jesus' name. It's a month where we do the impossible and make the impossible possible. In the name of Jesus. It's a month where <coughs> shoulder to shoulder we have the results of God himself in the name of Jesus. It's the month of months. It's the jubilee of jubilee. The setting in order and the reordering to set in its place decades and years of abnormality to correct and set it right in the name of Jesus. It's a month of miracles. It's a month of healing. It's a month of breakthrough. It's a month where the wisdom of men will be taken aback and the wisdom of God will have its course in the name of Jesus. It's a month where you'll be declared God's witness and you will be the testimony of God in the name of Jesus. It's a month where God will draft your name into his archives of his generals and his great men in the name of Jesus. It's a month where the systems will adjust will realign just for your sake in the name of Jesus. It's a month where people will be replaced and some will be brought down like the vastis and some will be reestablished. You'll be the one to be reestablished in the name of Jesus. It's a month of note and a reference point in your life by which you will point and recognize that at this time, the Lord did this, this, and this in your life. It's a month you will laugh. It's a month you will dance. It's a month you will rejoice. It's a month you will sing a new song in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen.